So let's take a look at what the output is like. So I've loaded the data into uh, DJI Terra. Now in DJI Terra, you can actually do uh, multi-spectral reconstruction. Uh, the indices available to you will be NDVI, LCI, GNDVI, OSABI, and DRE. Of course, the most common tool would be NDVI and NDRE. So as you can see, uh, the flight mission is the same pattern as it would be if I were to do a conventional mapping on, let's say, an M3E or an M3T, right? You can see this pattern. And it's overlaid on the map, right? So what else can you get directly from the RGB? It is, you can see the quality. This is captured at an altitude of 120 meters. Uh, it's crisp. It's as good as the M3E. It's got the same mechanical shutter, etc. Right? So it's similar in performance. So let's take a look at the vegetation index version. Now, as you can see, registration is good, uh, even with things like the squares and image and things like that. It's done well. There are no alignment issues. Uh, let's take something inorganic. That would be a very good uh, marker. Right. So let's place that here. And if I were to switch to RGB, yep. The alignment is pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. And just for reference, this area uh, of its size, which let's see. Um, This is in almost 12 hectares. It was captured in less than five minutes. So as you can see, it's a pretty rapid platform for doing work like this. Now in every folder, what you're gonna get is a PP kit is going to get your RGB image. So you get one for green, near infrared, red, and red edge. And then uh, you have your Rhinex observation data and your timestamp marker. So it's the same as you would have on the M3E if you had the RTK head as well. Now there was once a question if the images can be processed using Agisoft. Uh, I don't have Pix4D, but I can show you that it can be done using Agisoft. So what you would do is, if you were to load the entire folder, let's take this folder, you would have to select multi-camera system, right? Now the one uh, error that you see here is the RGB image, so we'll continue. And you will only see one single channel here. Right? So once you go through the normal alignment process, you will then go into the calibrate reflectance menu. And you can even use the sun sensor data. So here you can even uh, work to, if you have a calibration panel, uh, you can then label where the panel is. right? And of course, if you have a panel with very specific parameters, you can key that in. So uh, what you see this, uh, why, did it, why is this image very dark? Because it's, on, it's reflected ratio data. So it's not the actual uh, reflectance. Once you calibrate using the sun sensor, the images will go dark. It's typical because they've taken and subtracted the amount of light coming from the sun already. So this is the actual amount of reflected light. The difference between uh, what was coming from the sun and what is received. 
So what you see is a re it's an image of the difference only. Now this will then can be processed yeah, you, in math. So once you calib once you set the raster transform, so you can set the individual colors uh, using the formulas for your vegetation index. So if you have NDVI, then you would just uh, put in the mathematical expression for NDVI, and then you would get your imaging index. Sorry, uh, vegetation index. It's a little bit more manual, but uh, yeah, you can do this with uh, Edgesoft. So I hope this video has been informative to you. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below or send us an email. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. And as always, thank you and fly safe.